Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie if you are new and I'm so excited that you are here. Today I'm going to be doing a cook and clean with me. These are some of my very favorite types of videos to film. And we are first gonna start with dinner and I'm gonna share with you our favorite nacho recipe. They are pulled pork nachos and we eat these probably once a week. The pork is cooked in the Instant Pot, which makes it just super easy, and I'm telling you, it is so tender. And then after that, I'm gonna take you guys along with me as I clean up the kitchen and get my kitchen just reset and ready for a successful and productive next day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the Instant Pot pulled pork for our nachos. The first thing to do is get the pork ready, and we're gonna trim the fat and cut it into four pieces. We are really only able to get pretty giant sized pork shoulders at our grocery store and so I will usually cut it in half and only cook half at a time and then put the rest in the freezer for another time. And even cooking half, which is about four pounds, we still end up with plenty of leftovers for another dinner's worth. Usually we will do like pulled pork sandwiches the next night with our leftovers. Trim any major pieces of fat off of your meat and then cut it into four pieces and add it to a decently large size bowl. We love this Kinder's brand of seasonings. They have all kinds of different ones. So this is what I'm using today, but in the description, I'm also going to leave some different spices and measurements. So if you don't have this particular seasoning, you can just make your own. And like I said, I'll have that all in the description box below for you. So you're just gonna sprinkle the seasonings onto the meat and toss to make sure that it is all coated in that yummy, flavorful seasoning. Turn your Instant Pot to the saute mode and add some oil. We love avocado oil. And then add two pieces of meat at a time and you're gonna sear it on all sides. Once all the meat is seared, remove it from the Instant Pot, and then you're going to add some chicken broth. I actually didn't have chicken broth. I ran out and forgot, but I made my own using some water and some better than bouillon. And so just add that to the bottom, and you're gonna scrape all of the brown bits off of the bottom. Make sure to get it all off, otherwise they will burn while the meat is cooking later. Then add some Worcestershire sauce. as well as some liquid smoke. And then add all of your meat back into the Instant Pot, making sure it is in there as evenly and spaced out as possible. Then place the lid on your Instant Pot and make sure that the pressure valve is sealed closed and then you're going to pressure cook for one hour. While the pork is cooking, this is the perfect time to get all of your toppings ready and prepped. And you can get really creative with this and use pretty much whatever you want, but today I'm gonna to share with you some of our favorites. We like to use tomatoes, shredded lettuce, avocados, but guacamole would be really good too olives if that is your jam i'm an olive person although andrew does not like them cheese of course since these are nachos and also since these are barbecue nachos barbecue sauce and i'll show both of those a little bit later we also like to do sour cream and jalapenos pickled or fresh andrew sometimes will add salsa to his so like i said you can just kind of get creative and do whatever you prefer as an individual or as a family. 
Once the one hour of cook time is done, then you're actually gonna let the Instant Pot natural release for 20 minutes. That means just let it sit there for 20 minutes and then you can release the pressure seal valve. And you guys will not believe how tender this pork is. It literally just falls apart, pulls apart so beautifully. And you'll actually see that I kind of had a difficult time getting it out of the Instant Pot because it just kept falling apart. It is that tender and it is so flavorful. I'm not gonna lie, I used to be intimidated by this cut of meat. I used to think that it was gonna turn out really tough or it was gonna take a really long time to cook and I just didn't kinda really know how. And this is the easiest way to cook it and it turns out perfectly every time. So I really like to serve our nachos on baking sheets and then I just line them with parchment paper. I like the look of it. I think it feels like a restaurant, but also it really helps with cleanup. So we are gonna use queso from our local Mexican restaurant. It is so good and I prefer queso over like shredded cheese melted. I just like the texture better, but also I'm not a huge fan of like canned queso. So Mexican restaurant queso is so good if you have access to it. I'm also using the chips because I think those just taste better. So first I laid out the chips, then I sprinkled on some of the pulled pork. Then on top of that, I like to drizzle on the cheese. It just helps the chips not get as soggy so fast. Then on top of that, I'm adding some spicy, barbecue sauce from the Traeger line. I love this one so much. And then to that, I'll do some shredded lettuce and then some diced tomatoes, that diced avocado, guacamole would be great as well, sour cream. And then I'm finally topping it off with some pickled jalapenos. Now that dinner is all done, I am going to clean the kitchen. I'm actually gonna show you kind of two phases of cleaning that I did. I cleaned this mess that you're seeing right here up while the Instant Pot was doing its thing and cooking for an hour. And then I also am gonna show you me cleaning up after dinner. So this is me kind of cleaning up after like the cooking process. We also just had a lot of dishes sitting in the sink from that day. And so I'm gonna clean all of that up and then like I said, I'll show you cleaning up after the dinner mess.
give me all your love Oh, cause I want you No one else makes me feel this way Don't know what you do Hold my hand, could you hold my hand Look me in the eyes You and me, yeah, that's all I need So now this is cleaning up after dinner and all of that mess. The kids, I believe, were actually in bed at this point. Sometimes if the mess is just huge or we're having a busy chaotic or kind of a late night, I'll put the kids to bed and then I'll come do the dinner dishes. But a lot of times I usually will just clean up while the kids are in the living room playing or watching a movie or maybe they're like taking a bath and Andrew's helping them with that. I'll clean up the dinner dishes then. Myself that maybe he ain't worth it. Too bad I hate advice. These are our leftovers with that pulled pork, and there's just so much of it left over. And can you believe this is only half of that cut of meat that I started out with in the beginning? And we ended up having pulled pork sandwiches with this um, the next night after having our nachos.
I do get asked quite often over on Instagram what brand of pots and pans we use. I have a lot of caraway pans and those are pretty good. Um, and then this one is the Always Pan and it's from the brand Our or the company Our Place and I like both of them as well. So I just thought I'd share that in case any of you guys were wondering as well. I am pretty particular about my appliances. I have to wipe them down after I use them before putting them away. I cannot stand it when my appliances are like put away dirty and then I go to use them the next day because it's just that much harder to clean. So I have found that if I can go ahead and clean them off after every single use, it prevents me from having to do a major deep clean and I don't know, I just like pulling out my appliances and then being nice and sparkly clean and ready for me to use right away. This little corner here by the sink is kind of a problem area for me. I don't really know how to decorate it or set it up. I don't like a lot of things on my countertops and this counter is actually kind of a busy pattern so I feel like a lot of things just don't show up in general. So I'm not really sure like what to do here. I'm here, you'll see, I'm trying to switch it up and put this little like rectangular tray down first. I definitely need to get some like prettier bottles for my soaps but I used to have that pedestal or what is it cake tier thing up there before and I think I'm actually going to go back to that for the time being. I think it looks just a little bit better. But yeah, this little corner area is kind of tricky. And although I do love my kitchen counters, I think they're just beautiful if you look at them. They are a little bit busy for my taste. And so in general, I kind of have a hard time finding things to decorate my kitchen with. I used to also not really like my backsplash. I just, I like a, a plain white kitchen, but now that I'm kind of going in more of a coastal direction, I do kind of enjoy the backsplash. I think it's actually really pretty. It's kind of natural looking. I think it would be better if it was paired with maybe a less busy countertop, but I do kind of like the backsplash now. I think it's, it's kind of pretty. Um, okay, so now I'm going to clean the stove top. I don't do this nearly as often as I should, but when I do, I use the Barkeeper's Friend stove top cleaner. It's fantastic. Something else that I just learned from my aunt actually is that if you use this on your dishes that have like your dinner dishes that have scratches on them, that apparently this stove top cleaner removes those scratches. So, I haven't tried it yet. I definitely want to try it cuz I have some of our white dishes that have scratches in them, but if it works, that'll be pretty awesome so I thought I'd share with you I like to fill up my diffuser when I am cleaning because I don't use cleaners that have fragrance in them so I want my house still smelling really good so I'm using the kid sense kid power oil I have been putting this in my diffuser for weeks now pretty much exclusively I think it smells really good it's got a lot of vanilla in it and it also kind of smells like fruity pebbles to me so I've been kind of obsessed with this one it smells really good We are that family that has a bajillion pictures and artwork and schoolwork and school calendars all on the front of our refrigerator and I truly would not have it any other way. I kind of love this little bit of chaos in my home. So I though don't clean the refrigerator as often as I should and I'm going to do that tonight. I am using the Wyman stainless steel cleaner. I've been using this one for years and it is truly my favorite. And I just spray it on and then use a microfiber cloth. The trick is you want to go with the grain, like wipe with the grain at first and then come back with a dry part of your cloth and go in circular motions and kind of buff it out. Bye. 
best, baby, I will show you how you can catch my vibe And right away I so much time looping in the blurry lights I've also found that this stainless steel cleaner works really good on glass. So you would think that maybe it would kind of add some oily smears to the front of the microwave or the stove or the oven, but it actually leaves it really shiny and really clean. This high chair gets cleaned three times a day at least. This is the messiest process ever but I am so often reminded of how quickly this stage goes. They go from being a baby and making a huge mess to sitting at the table and eating off a plate just so quickly. I've actually used this same exact high chair that you saw for all three of my babies and I have been cleaning this high chair for five years and like I said it seems like it's a lot of work and it really is but this stage of life just goes by so stinking fast and I truly savor at this point every single time I get to clean that mess up. In the beginning when I was cleaning up after Emmy, I just didn't appreciate it the way that I appreciate it now seeing how fast everything goes. I usually get on my hands and knees with a wet rag and clean up the mess under Hudson's high chair. I find that it's just the best way to do it because I can like see all of the spots and wipe up any like wet food spots if that makes sense with the wet rag rather than like trying to sweep it up or vacuum it up and then having to go back over it and mop. Since I have to do this three times a day I just feel like this is the best way to do it. That is going to be it for today's video. The kitchen is all clean. It is all reset and ready for me to have a nice productive day the next day. Thank you guys for being here and watching this video. The recipe for the pork nachos is in the description box below. Follow me on Instagram if you would like to at Allie underscore Gooch. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love it if you did that too. And I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.